You know the part in the book of Job where God spoke to the enemy and asking him what he was doing and how he said he comes to or fro, seeking whom he may devour. I've said this before, and I hope that you get the message straight, because when he, when you give your life to Christ and you ask God to cover your sins with the blood, a lot of people claim, well, you have to have a witness with you. You have to do it in church. You have to, you could do it on your knees at home. Okay. The witness that I had was Jesus Christ, God the Father, and God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. That is my witness. And so it, it stayed, it, it embedded and it stayed that I was saved, that I gave my life to God with the promise that I would let him come in to my life and lead me and guide and direct me. And the only way you can do that is through the word. That's the only way. Because the New Testament, like Hebrews says, is a will and testament of what to do with your life, what to do with you. It's his will. And why would you want a Savior and not want to do his will? Why would you want to still continue on going your own way? That seems just, you know, <laughs> not a good thing. Anyway, so when you give your life to God and you ask him to come into your heart, wash all of your sins away, sins that you have done all the way then past, sins that were uh, come into your life through the generations, sins that you're tempted to, sins that you you haven't even thought of for years, sins, all of those sins, you pray your way through till you feel the presence of God that you've got them under the blood of Jesus Christ, and that your garment is washed. And you just ask him, wash me white as snow. And he will. He absolutely will. And when you ask him to come into your heart, you don't realize what you're saying. How can you find him? How could you find uh, how he comes into your heart if you don't ever, ever get into the word of God? And the only place that I know of that you can really find him is in the Gospels. Because those are the words that were written and were read, because those are the words that are from him. And those are the things that you need to see and understand. And you need to look at him and know, as you're seeking him, this is the man who loved me. I fell in love with it. Every time I saw him do a miracle, Every time I saw the compassion and the love that he had, that love in me just leaped up for him inside of me. I could not get enough because you see, I don't know if any of you have ever even in the flesh been in love, but you know, if you love someone, you think about them morning, noon, and night. You would never want to displease them. You would never want to hurt them if you really loved them. You would always want to be pleasing to them so that they would always have joy to be with you. <clears throat> and the only way <clears throat> you can find that for yourself is not by listening to people tell you what that Bible says. For well, the word of God tells you that you do not understand the word by your own understanding, your own wisdom. Because he says that man in his wisdom didn't want God. He figured I don't need him. But you ask God to open up your understanding. From the moment I asked God that, all of life in that Bible was opened up to me. I understood things that 
that I never dreamed I would ever understand. Things got put together by God daily. I didn't use that Bible like a horoscope. I didn't say, well, God led me into this psalm, and so this is what's going to happen with my day, and I'll pray over my day. No, I didn't do that. I wasn't after that. I was after him, loving him. Who are you, God? How are you, God? How did you get here, God? How did, I want to know all about him. And I could not get enough. So much so that I read and just devoured Matthew 27 times. I devoured it. I could not. I fed off of it and I could not get enough. Because I fell in love with him. Once I saw that he loved me so much that he died for me, all of the pain of the past, all of the people that were cruel and mean and hated me, they literally, for me, disappeared. They didn't count anymore. What they did to me didn't count. It was what he did with me and for me that counted in my heart. It's, I was a God chaser. I chased after him. I wouldn't let him go. You know how Jacob wrestled with God and wouldn't let God go until he got blessed. Well, I would not let God go. I hung on to him. No matter what I faced, no matter what I went through, I hung on. I belong to Jesus. So when the floods of hell came, I belong to Jesus. And I knew they couldn't touch me. I didn't have to speak to them. I didn't have to talk to them. All I had to do is know I belong to Jesus. So you can say what you will about his name. You could twist it up any way you want. But he's the one that pulled me through everything. He's the one that took me off my bed, deathbed repeatedly over and over and over. All the while, not only my husband, but there were other witnesses that saw the condition I was in. There was no way I could have lived. I even have pictures of me in that condition. And there's, there is just no way I could have lived. And yet, look what he did. Look where he brought me. I mean, we're talking about 40 years ago. We're talking about uh, 30 years ago. 20 years ago. How many different things attacked me and put me on my deathbed? And each time, thank you, Father, that precious hand, each time he pulled me up, he's the one. He's the one you've got to know. He's the one that when he says, come, you go. Come unto me. He reaches out his hand, come. He is not a million miles away. He's right there in front of you, with you, behind you. He is everywhere with you. From the moment that you want him and you ask for him, he says, a broken and contrite heart, he will never despise. But you see, the human makes you go backwards. Your, your temptations cause you to go backwards. Your thoughts, and that's why you have to bring those thoughts into captivity. You have to get them under control. Like Paul the Apostle says, he beat his body into subjection. He didn't mean he took a bat and beat it, beat, beat him. He meant he forced it into subjection. He forced it to do what it was supposed to do. He, he told his body, you've got to do this. I told you when I was crippled and my hands were like a claw, they were like this. It didn't look like they would ever straighten up. 
And I commanded them to straighten. I grabbed a hold of them. And I, in the name of Jesus, you will be straight. You will. And I mean, the fingers still wanted to do that and bend so bad. And I, God, I got, you will. You will. My hand is going to function the way God created it. Look at it. There's no bends in it. There's no nothing. When my feet could not go from agonizing pain, when I, they weighed 500 pounds to me and I could only drag them, I would tell them, you will walk. You will, in the name of Jesus Christ, walk. Now, how? How could you do that if you don't know that he's inside of you to do it? How does he come inside of you? You die daily. That's a process that you have to have. You may have a gift to go out there and talk to people. You may have a gift to go out there and you think you're praying for people to be healed. You may have a gift to even sing. You may have a gift. But if you use that gift too soon and you never learn how, if you want to be used of God, then learn how to do it his way, not your way. Those miracles over my body, when my blood pressure come up, I commanded it right there on the cuff, go to 120 over 80. And it went. The doctor says, "Are you, is your blood pressure always 120 over 80? Is it, when you go to the doctors, is it all? You know, yes. Because I can, oh, oh, but you got, they'll tell you, you've got blood pressure. You've got heart disease. You've got diabetes. <laughs> Look at them and I'd say, no, I don't. I belong to Jesus. He's in here. He doesn't have those things. Therefore, you won't find them. I can remember having a, a horse and that horse was dying and it looked like cancer. And the vet, vet came. And he said, I know what this disease is. It's a real old disease. And if it is what I think it is, it is going to, I'm going to quarantine this horse farm. I'm going to quarantine you because it is dangerous to dogs, cats, and humans. So I'm going to go and run some blood tests and I'm going to see what this is. And the Lord said to me, Marion, he's wrong. Rebuke it. Rebuke that diagnosis. She does not have that disease. And I did. He come back and he goes, I couldn't find it. I couldn't prove it. No matter what I did, no matter what test I run, I could not prove she had that disease. All she had was cancer. And she was the only horse I ever had that I owned that died. And that was because God came to me. It's heartbreaking to lose a dog. It's heartbreaking to lose a cat. It's heartbreaking to lose any kind of animal. But a horse to me, it was agonizing. And God came to me and spoke and he said, Marion, I allowed this to happen, and I am going to take her. She is not going to live. After doing miracle after miracle of saving horses right in front of people, saving them. I mean, they, the doctors gave them up as good as dead, the vets, I mean. As good as dead. Let them thrash. They'll kill themselves, but let them thrash. It's too late. There's nothing here. And they would just, boom come right up and be healed. Just like that. Boom. Right? Right in the doctor would go, where's the sick horse? Standing right in front of it. Where's the one that was dying? Where? Where? Right in front of it. But this one, God says, Marion, I want you to know what it is like to go through losing something that you love so very much. 
because the day is going to come. You're going to ask me for a life and I'm going to have to tell you no. And just the way I'm saying no here and what, expecting you to accept it. He said, just remember, this is why. Something like 30 years later, that day came. And I knew I couldn't ask him. Because I knew he said he was going to take him. But I'm trying to explain to you. When you look at him in the word, you must look at him as that healing power that he used with others, that love that he had that you could see. It's all for you. Take it into your heart. And, wow. Let him love on you. I've said it over and over. Let God love on you when you look at that. But you must deny what you think and what you feel and what you've been told. You've been taught things that are not true. You've been told things that are not so. And the only way you can overcome that is by finding the way he really is between you and him. Not between me, him, and you. That's why I say you don't need me. You don't need me at all. You need him. That's what I tell people, I'm not here to get followers. Oh, I want the message to get out so people like you can find Jesus Christ. That I want. But, but I'm not after you thinking and coming and running to me for prayer and wanting to be with me and, and telling me, uh, I don't want that. I, that kind of fellowship, I don't want. Because I know the best fellowship you could have is him and you. God did the greatest thing on earth with me. And you know what that was? He saw to it that not a single person on this earth could help me. He saw to it that not a doctor, not anybody, not a pastor, not a priest, no one. No one could pray me out. No one could help me. And it forced me to look up and depend upon him. So the greatest thing that could happen to you is to trust only in him. I never would have learned the things that I learned about God and with God had I not learned them, just him and I. And that's what you must do. That is where you must go. And you cannot find him as long as, yes, but so-and-so said, we this and that. Yes, but I heard someone say this. This is what I hear all the time from people. But I heard this one. You know how they say, they some say this. And you know how, because you know what? They're searching all right. But they're searching on the internet. And they listen to this voice for a while. They listen to that voice for a while. And pretty soon, everything it gets confused. Pretty soon, you're depending on that one to pray for you. You're depending on that one. And you're sending them money because you think you owe it to them. And you owe no man nothing. This is why I even taught you about tithing. You have been lied to when they tell you to dig deep in your first fruits or the money that you make that come home. And that's what you do. I've seen people have $8,000 worth of bills and give every penny they could to the church. $8,000, they just went deeper and deeper into debt and robbed their children of whatever they could have. And that's why I am so adamant about how not to do that with me. Because if you earn a thousand dollars and five hundred of it belongs to those that lent you money to buy a house, lent you money to buy a car, 
lent you money for this. That money, that $500 belongs to the lender and you cannot tithe on it. It's up to them. But the second 500, that's yours. That's what you tithe on. But the teaching is you do it the way the Old Testament did. But you forget there's a lot of things in the New Testament that Jesus said, you heard of old time, this, this, and this. But I say unto you, it's this way. Because this is grace. This is favor from God. Grace is the ability to do what you need to do through the presence and the power of God. He will favor you, love on you, do all... All you have to do is love his son. Make up your mind that you will not do one thing that will dishonor him or go against him. Make up your mind that you are going to find out everything that you can about him and that you are not going to raise up. And this is what a lot of them do. And they do it quickly. You have a few sessions with them and they're just, boom, they're out of this world. And they raise up. And I got it all. Now I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to do that. And I know I can handle this and I know I can handle And none of them, none of them are going to make it. I'm telling you. None of them. Because they won't take the time to be holy. It isn't a matter of jumping over. Well, you know what? These people notice that I have wisdom. Of course you do. You were listening to wisdom. But these people notice that, and so therefore, I'm going to have a Bible study. Well, and, and these people, they know I have wisdom, and they'll listen to me. No, they won't. If they're playing games with God like I think they are, no, they won't. They just will use you. Believe me. And when you're done being used by them, you're going to cry. I'm telling you, you're going to cry. Every person I ever warned that they are going to cry, they cried. Because God would come to me and tell me, I, I knew of a person that did whatever they wanted to do. And I said, I begged him not to do it. I did it anyway. And I said, God told me to tell you, you're going to cry. The day is going to come, you're going to cry. It wasn't too much further up the road. The way things turned out, he just bawled like a baby because he cried because you do not do the things that you do with God and one of the things people do is they pick up everything too soon they don't pick up their cross oh they say they do but they don't deny themselves they're looking to be seen and to be heard and that even as they hear me speak they say that's not me I know that's that's the worst place you can be because even the disciples didn't dare do that. When Jesus told them that you, one of you will betray me, they didn't dare do that with him. They didn't say, well, I know it's not me. I know that he couldn't possibly be talking about it. They didn't. They went to him and said, I said, hi, because you are better off to Go before God and say, hey, is this me? Is Did I do this? Hey, I've been there a million times, and I know what I'm talking about. And if I went there a million times, and you only went there a few, and you think you have the same thing, and that you're going to go about your business the same way, you've got it all wrong. And you're hurting yourself. You're not hurting me. You're hurting yourself. <clears throat> You're diminishing what God had called you to. You're diminishing what God wants to do with you. When you, when you t take everything as though you by yourself are everything, it's, that's not the same thing as separating to become holy. It's separating to say to yourself, you're the only one that got. You're the only one that understands. You're the only one that knows. So you have to. Maybe some of you uh, think that, well, uh, you're controlled, you're, you're this, you're that. 
once you touch that, you're touching the wrong pew. Don't go there. I'm telling you, don't go there. <clears throat> so, when you send me a praise report, don't send me one telling you, telling about how you were able to go and find a church and, and enjoy and everything's in your, your calling. You're going to answer your call because you haven't even begun. And I'm telling you that because whatever was, was prayed over you was not for you to go and run to do your own will because a time is going to come that you're going to find out it's not the way you think. That you have to go through the process of dying to self, picking up your cross. Your cross is you. Your burden is you. I told you before what God showed me in the very beginning, because he told me, he showed me from the very beginning, 50 years ago, he showed me how these pastors fell. Because I said, Lord, don't call me to be a preacher. Don't call me to be a teacher. I don't want no parts of it. Because you see that one over there? They served you for 35 years, and then they ran off with a Sunday school teacher. They served you for 50 years and look at them now. They are, they stole that money and they run off with it. I said, I don't want to be like that. Serving and walking and talking with you for all those years and then find out I'm in the wrong pew. I don't want that to happen to me. That was when he showed me. I'm going to fix it that you will never fall if you will obey me. And he showed me my mountain, which was me. He says, see this mountain? Yeah, that's you. You and I are going to overcome you. Then he said, my mind. And then when he showed me a flash of it, it was scary. And he said, you see this woman in her mind? That's you. But don't worry about it. We are going to overcome it. And that's what he did. He step by step by step. He helped me overcome the imagination of my heart. He helped me to overcome every thought that passed through my brain. He helped me to overcome in every possible way, whether it was emotional, physical, mental, whatever it was. He taught me all of those things so that there is no way that anything can come and knock on my door and say, I'm doing this. So you can think all you want. You can leave and say, hey, I know what I'm talking about. You can do that. Do that. It's your life. I'm not going to stop you. But I will warn you, you're in the wrong pew. You better go back to the original. Go back to where God first called you and ask him to forgive you for taking off. That's all I got to say about that. And I'm telling you, after a while, you might put it off so long. I've, whoa, I've seen them do it. God just slipped it out from them, and they could not do it. They kept on saying, I got plenty of time. I'm going to do it, and I've got plenty of time. It's going to be okay. No. And when the time come, when they decided, whew, God just pulled it off of them said, nope, you're not going to do it because you don't do things on your timing. You don't do things your way and claim God. You do things his way. And when you know the kind of gift I have and you won't listen to it, that's between you and God. But those of you who really want God, I know you can find him. I know you will find him. I am only asking you to do yourself a great big favor. Don't run off with it. Don't fly high and run off with it that you're ready. When you haven't even spent a couple of nights with him, a couple of times that you sat before him and, and, and you got it all prayed down, that's not what he's after. Yeah, that's how you get saved, but that's not how you clean out your mind and clean out the imagination of your heart to see to it that you never fall. 
there's a big difference. One takes quite a while. And he needs you to do that. Because I'm going to tell you what. When you reach into the place of unbelief, the devil goes before God. And here's what he says. You see him or her? You see them? They claim to be yours, don't they, God? And God says, yeah, they are. They're mine. He says, watch them. Look what they're doing. I can't touch them unless they don't believe you. They're going to do it their way. So he takes that unbelief and he shoves it right in the face of God and says and laughs at God and mocks him because you chose to go your own way. You chose to do your own thing after being told. You see, God can't hold against you what you don't know. He won't. But when you do know, when you've been warned and you, you've been told and you've been taken aside and nurtured and helped and you spit on that, Mm. And you say, well, I'm not doing that. God knows I'm no, God knows the evidence is clear. You're the one that can't see, not God. His eyes are clear. Because I know I've got him. And you know I have him. But you're going to insist, I just don't know. There's no difference between you and the one that will call me up and say, but you just don't understand. You just don't know. No, sorry. You're the one that doesn't understand, and you're the one that doesn't know. Because I've been where you're at. I've been where every last one of you have gone. I've been there. Oh, I might not have been exactly the same way. But I've been there and done that and overcame it. That's how I know where you're at. I gotta see how many minutes I've got here. Well, I've got 20 some minutes. Again, it's the middle of the night. Unable to sleep. Mainly because I want you to get it right. There are some that call me and I am telling you, they are well on their way to doing what they need to do. And I am so thankful to God that they are laboring with it. There's some that were so bad when I first met them. And uh, it, it is just a miracle that they are who and what they are today. I just heard from one today. And uh, and she told me how she's getting better at walking in the garden with the Lord. And you have no idea of the miracle of what it took to get her there. I have another hard case that, oh, I'll tell you, there's one, there's one case that she was just, I couldn't believe how sweet and easily entreated her spirit was. That I could literally tell her that things were in her mind and her not be upset and hurt, but her want to be rid of it. Oh, that's, when you got somebody like that, that's really good. But then you have those that no matter what you say to them, they can't hear you. They have ears to hear, but they don't hear. You see. And that's sad. I mean, I, I pray for her that it, there be a breakthrough. And it seems like after about three times, maybe it's going to be broken through. But I've been blessed to know Many of you have good ground. Many of you are going to make great Christians in the Lord because you are going the slow process of walking and talking with him and striving to do it right. And some of you 
have already been there and done that. Some of you already understood how to do that. And some of you are benefiting from a lot of these videos. So, either way, I'm blessed. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, I am blessed. When I lay my head to rest, I am blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. And I got that song a little bit backwards, but I remember a little boy singing that song all day long. It was in my kindergarten class, and he would sing that song. And I just hope and pray he's okay, because he's had a very hard life. Even though I haven't seen him for years, my last memory of him is contacting me after 20 years and telling me thank you for being a positive influence in my life. That meant more to me than anything. And I just pray that he hang on to Jesus because he's been through a lot. And my heart goes out to him. I'm just thinking about all the ones that have really been a blessing. I mean, a joy to just even talk to, to, to see the love they have for God. Oh my goodness. You couldn't imagine after being alone for so long and having people like that come into your life. Oh wow. It's, it's phenomenal. <laughs>